Herzlich willkommen auf dem lösungsorientierten Vernetzungsportal Living Earth. Hier auf der Living Earth beleuchten wir jeden Monat ein bestimmtes Thema von den unterschiedlichsten Seiten. Um dann das neu gewonnene Wissen, die praktischen Erfahrungen und Anwendungen in unserem Alltag und in unsere Projekte zu integrieren. So erschaffen wir gemeinsam, Schritt für Schritt, die neue lebendige Erde. Welcome to this Living Earth Inspiration of Flight. Today we will learn about an amazing and super efficient method of resolving trembling old trauma, stress, anxiety out of the body with something called neurogenic tremor. Yes, it's literally trembling to relax. And we will find out today why and how that works. And I have the honor and pleasure to introduce you to David Berselli, US American bioenergeticist and psychotherapist, the inventor, founder of this amazing method, Tremor Release Exercise. Welcome, David. Thank you for being here. And thank you for gifting the world with your experience and wisdom. Thank you for the invitation. It's great to be here. I look forward to talking with you about it. Wonderful. I would like to first share my first experience with the trauma release exercise. It was in Engsbaka in Sweden this summer. And we joined a lot of classes there. I mean, any class we could get with this, uh, with this technique. And I immediately felt a deep gratitude about the simplicity, about the effectiveness And I could feel very soon a lot of old stories, tension coming up in my body and literally trembling out of my system. And the feeling afterwards was so sweet and light and filled with energy. So I'm very grateful for that. And I'm also grateful to have met you there in person, David Berselli, and experiencing you as a highly competent and so loving human being. Thank you so much for being here on this planet. <laughs> Thank you. And you too. I mean, we're just sharing being on the planet together. That's what it's all about. <laughs> so I'm so curious. How did you find out about this method? What is the story behind? It's kind of interesting because I believe that the whole world knows about it. But I was forced to see it at a deeper level than we normally do. So if I said to you, Have you ever had the experience or seen somebody who had the experience where they were in a minor car accident, as an example, and they get out of the car, they're not injured, but their hands are shaking or they're starting to cry or their voice is quivering and they're trying to reach for their wallet and get their driver's license and they could see they're shaking. Well, all of us know that shaking. When I tell people all over the world about it, they say, oh, yeah, I know that. Well, that's a curiosity to me. How did all of us know that? How does every human being know it? How does every human being experience it in some form in their life, in some way? And yet we never ask the question, does this have any potential value for the human body? So my experience was living in war in the Middle East for a number of years. And I both experienced this shaking out of terror and fear, as well as observed everybody in my environment doing the same thing. And I thought, we're from different cultures, different languages, different understandings of life, but yet the human organism is performing exactly the same way in all of us. So it made me think when that tremor mechanism activates, we're going below culture, we're going down into the human organism. And that's identical around the world. So then my question was, all right, if this is shaking and it's happening without my cognitive desire to do so. As a matter of fact, often we don't want it to happen. Why is the body still doing it? And how does it do it? What part of the brain produces that? How does it activate in the nervous system so quickly? And so those questions were in my mind. That was the beginning of saying this is organic to the human person. If it's genetically encoded in us, If it's organic to all of us, it must have some potential therapeutic value. And we should be exploring that. We should be exploring every part of us that is part of our very nature of being a human species on the planet. 
So that question was in the back of my mind for quite a while. But the other question was, which is another pattern that I saw. Now this pattern, and everyone will recognize it. If there was a loud sound just outside your house, you'd go like that, see? Or if you're out in the streets and a car backfires or there's some sort of construction sound that's very loud, you go like that. Well, what that pattern is, is called the fetal response. So it pulls the head down into the shoulders, shoulders come up, then the body pulls forward all the ways into a, what we call fetal response to protect the underbelly. And so when I was in these countries that where there's a lot of bombing and fighting and mortar shells, et cetera, occasionally you'd be caught off guard and you'd find yourself going like this. Well, it was the same thing. I looked at every human being there. We must have been from five or six different countries standing around just talking. A mortar shell went over and every one of us did exactly the same movement. And I thought, wow, we are really living in the most basic way in a human body that's struggling to survive. It's struggling to survive life. But what amazed me was that we're built with mechanisms in the body to help us survive life. So that fetal response and the tremor mechanism, I was able to pull both of those together. Now, here's how that happened. I was in a bomb shelter and I had two um, children sitting on my laps, two young boys. They were facing each other, so I had my hands on their backs. And I could feel them tremoring with terror in their back. I could feel it because I was afraid too. But I found it fascinating the way I could feel it in my hands and how their whole body was moving was amazing. So I looked around the bomb shelter and all of the young children were tremoring freely because they had not been trained to inhibit it yet. When they got to be about 11, 12, or 13, I could see they were shaking, but they were trying to stop it. And none of the adults were tremoring. And so when I left the bomb shelter, I asked the adults, do you ever shake like the children do? And they said, oh, no, no. We don't want them to think we are afraid. So it, it dawned on me. I was seeing us in these two-year-old children. I was seeing the nature of humanity's genetically encoded mechanisms for survival being activated. Now, why, why did it stop? Why do we not know what it is anymore as adults? Think of crying. It's the same thing. As a two-year-old falls and hurts their knee, they will cry freely. At around 11, 12, or 13, they're supposed to, quote, grow up. Now they'll fall and hurt their knee, and they, they might start to cry, but they'll hold it in. You can see the holding in an organic pulsation of crying. It's, it's horrible that we do that. But they hold it in. And now as adults, we could fall, we could break our knee and we won't cry. We actually train our system out of its organic growth process or mechanisms. So the same thing we did with the tremor mechanism. Watch the narrative that we have both in the medical system and in society at large. If I shake, I'm it, you will think he's afraid, he's vulnerable, he's weak, he's insecure. I probably shouldn't trust him. He probably needs to go to therapy or needs medication, which we do in our hospitals. No one has a narrative that says, oh, he's shaking. This is wonderful. He's releasing stress from his body in the most natural way that the body knows how to relieve stress. And so we have completely written a narrative that negates that we will ever have access to this tremor mechanism again. And when we do, we won't even know how to use it. The value of it is huge. It's immense because it's a genetic encoding in us. And that means the human organism still needs to use it. And TRE or tension and trauma releasing exercises or neurogenic tremors is about exploring what capacity can the human body go to? What depth can we go to when we use its own genetically encoded mechanisms? And one of the major ones, I think, is this tremor response. It's wonderful. What I learned through all my interviews and research is that we have all the healing capacities within us. We are, it's like, a, it's like a, a, such an amazing, I don't want to word, use the word mechanism because I don't want to go into technical uh, words 
too much but it's a miracle that we are inhabiting and it's 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 about uh like um self-healing cap capacities and i'm so grateful that you talk about this and you found this you you put your attention on something nobody puts its attention to <laughs> Well, well, let me say this. I'm not sure I did it voluntarily or because I was particularly clever. I think I was a little bit slow learning because the universe had to put me in war for, for almost eight years till I finally began to see. It's almost like you kept throwing it in my face because like I told you, all of us have seen the tremor mechanism. All of us have seen or experienced the fetal response. Why didn't all of us think about this? It was just forced on me to... Uh, over such a period of time and, and so many times that by the nature of the experience, I had to begin to reflect on it. Thank you that, that you did, even if it took such cool <laughs> experiences. Yeah. And it's for all of us listening. The universe always shows us where we are meant to be. And it's it's good to listen early and to silence silence the loud noises in our heads that maybe come from media and listen to to our heart early enough that you don't have one to go too far like David. Yeah. <laughs> one of the things that's really interesting, and I and I uh, I'm cautious how I deliver this to people, but this profound mechanism that brings life was born out of me experiencing the possibility of death. Now, that's a wonderful metaphor for life. We do that ourselves all the time. We die in some way inside ourselves, and the dying is painful, but then we re we're reborn into somebody deeper. That's what all spiritual quests are about, or even psychology, or even family life, you know, raising children, etc., being with a spouse or partner. All of that is nothing but a process of dying and re being reborn, dying and being reborn. And we are capable of doing it. We demonstrate it every day. So when I use this technique, is it also kind of uh, something is dying and something yeah. is new? At least it, it felt like being newborn. It was so so simple that I couldn't believe that <laughs> nobody had taught me before. And I felt really newborn. I felt that something had died or like um, evaporated, out, trembled out of my system. Right. Okay, that's perfect. I love it. You used two words earlier, the simplicity and the effectiveness of this. Well, what I love about it is it should be simple and should be quite effective if it's our organic nature. If it's who we are, we should be able to have easy access to us and it should effectively um, help us. And so when we're using, act, when we activate this tremor mechanism, we're in a sense circumventing the ego and going directly into the nervous system of the body. That's what activates this. And then the nervous system starts to do its magic, working through muscles and fascia and tissue And all it's designed to do, this shaking mechanism, is to find in the body where there's tightness that is not us. See, the tightness is a defense against our very nature because something threatened us. So it's, it finds all those fake and artificial places that are still in us that could even be from childhood. And it begins to shake them to loosen them up. Once they loosen, you are a new being because you're no longer living with the old patterns that you had before you even started the exercise routine. So you came in with one set of patterns in your body that had a long history of why you had those patterns. And you tremored, even if it's just for half an hour, but it got out a lot of those little patterns that it could. And then all of a sudden you sit up and you say, I'm somebody different. I, I don't even know myself. What what just happened to me? And that's all because you didn't need cognition to do it. You need to just let your nervous system do what it knew how to do. And it was able to take away all the superficial tensions. Sometimes if we're available, deep chronic tension. But once that's gone, you are living in a new organism and you have to reorient yourself to say, I don't know who I am exactly but I'm different than the person who walked in this room to do these exercises. It's so beautiful. 
what I heard talking to people who uh, have a lot of experience and who also went through deeper traumas than I did, although my traumas were also okay, <laughs> um, that that um, you don't even like you remember it mentally, but the body doesn't remember it anymore. And it's fears are gone. Like you, I yeah. had fear about this. I had fear confronting my, my partner. I had fear confronting my boss or something. And, and those fears are gone. Yeah. That's a great point because we talk about the mind and the body as though they're two separate things and they're not really. Um, but we've been using the field of psychology to help change the body, et cetera. In this one, we use the body to actually change the, the, the neurology, if you will. So if you have a pattern in your body where you've got six different tight holding places, your belly, your shoulders, your chest, your back, and all of those are connected to the thought of confronting a friend or a partner. And all of a sudden, all of those let go. It actually changes the whole neural pathway. It doesn't exist anymore. It's like, why was I afraid? All of a sudden, you become more grounded in the being that you are, which means fear just, in a sense, fades away because there's nothing for it to connect onto anymore. All of those patterns were released. And so the neural pathway completely changes. So it actually is a neurophysiological um, process that occurs in us and it can tr it does transform us without a lot of ego effort it's almost the opposite you can daydream while you do this you don't even have to think about it because we're letting the body do this by itself and it knows the body knows how to take us out of this and bring us into greater aliveness as a matter of fact that's all it does Every day it pulsates with the desire to increase its aliveness. So if there's tension patterns, it's pushing up against those because it's just trying to get rid of them to produce a more alive human organism. And so the tremor mechanism seems to be invaluable for that process of the body. We're almost assisting the body by activating it to be able to get rid of those tight patterns and expand our own inner sense of our own humanity. That's so beautiful. It's like we are like always talking about shadow work and 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 releasing those uh, like onion onion peels or veils or and I love simple things. Really, mm. the simple, most effective techniques, and that's really one. So well, I think we all need simple, effective techniques because we do have great techniques. Like you said, all these psychological things that have developed, they're very good. They've been very helpful for us. But in some ways, they've caused us not to look for the more simple techniques where the human organism is already working with us in the direction that we think we're going you know, when we go to therapy and all that stuff. Yes, we're going in that direction, but now we can use the organism's own genetic encoding to assist that movement more easily. Beautiful. Recognizing this as a miracle animal that we can <laughs> use it also guides us through this uh, journey, adventurous journey on planet Earth. Um, there are things happening also with the psoas muscle and what I also, I admit, read, but I felt it also that a lot of um, hormones are like dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin are also released during this technique. Can you go a little bit into the? Yeah. Okay. So the psoas muscle, as since you mentioned it, is a major muscle that connects the legs, the pelvis and the lower back. So it's in the front of the pelvis. And when it squeezes, that's what helps pull us into that fetal response. So when it squeezes, then you've got a lot of um, chemicals that produce excitement, if you will, or it protects you because it, it, it's only squeezing. So as muscles squeezing to protect you from something that appears to be dangerous or threatening. But then when it releases, it releases the opposite chemicals that produce relaxation, pleasure and comfort. So even in the sexual act, what we're doing through the movement of the pelvis back and forth is we're contracting and releasing and contracting and releasing. So we're actually building up excitement, okay, through the adrenaline of the whole thing. And we're also building up the 
um, serotonin levels for the pleasure. We're designed this way. And so we can have both excitement and pleasure like that at the same time. Um, and that's when when you're the person you're with or the experience you're having is not dangerous. There's a safety to it. You can use that adrenaline and use the um, the chemicals that produce pleasure. You can use those together. And that means that both what's called the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system are co-activated. They're not separate. They're working together to produce a movement or a sensation in the structure that both has high energetic charge as well as high pleasure charge. And so a lot of that comes through the psoas muscle. I just had an image in my mind. It was like uh, the barkeeper. You're like, you can, you can start mixing cocktails uh, in your own body. Okay. But okay. Yeah. Today I get myself oxytocin, serotonin, dopamine. I do the trembling. <laughs> no, exactly right. You can't do that. I mean, that's what that whole um, movement is about. Opening chakras, helping Kundalini rise up. It's about how do we generate a high charge of energy, which we can should be able to contain in our bodies. That's been a problem for a lot of people. They create more energy than they can contain. But if you can do that, then you can have the high energetic charge with the pleasure of expansion, um, expansiveness. So um, that's beautiful. And it's also beautiful for people. Um, you talked and you said that you, you've been uh, in war for, for many years. And I heard that you're also working with... Uh, people that are severely traumatized mm -hmm. from wars or natural catastrophes and it supports them. It's nice for us if we can play and, and get a little, I mean, we all suffering from stress 24 seven. And that's, I think at right. least uh, I interviewed for my, for my movies, I interviewed um, Bruce Lipton and he told me that in his way of perceiving life, 99% of all diseases are coming from stress. And he says mm -hmm. the 1% left is from stress from our ancestors. <laughs> so if, I love him. He's good. He's good. Yes, I do too. And I think it's so beautiful because if 99% of diseases comes from stress and this releases stress, it's so wonderful. But mm -hmm. I started to talk about severe trauma mm -hmm. release. Yeah. Well, I've worked with severe trauma in many different forms around the world. And in all honesty, it it operates exactly the same, the tremor mechanism, because it's not picking and choosing anything. It's just releasing whatever is available to be released today. Now, there are tight tension patterns that are not available to be released today. So that tight pattern is also connected to either a, a psychological or emotional memory of some sort so that still we still feel we need it to protect us see and so what we do is if if i know there's a really tight pattern i'm going to open that pattern very very slowly see i'm not going to try to break through anything i don't believe it has value actually i'm going to let it open up real real slow and very slowly they begin to feel their freedom they begin to feel coming back to life um, it may be a bit more of a roller coaster ride in terms of the pain and the memory, uh, but the joy and the pleasure of releasing some of it. And they go back and forth. So we can, in a sense, facilitate the tremor mechanism the same way. If I know a client comes in and this person says, I've been sexually abused. Okay, I said, well, let's start there and let's see how much you can do comfortably. So we might just tremor for one minute, see? And then I'll say, all right, what did that feel like? And we'll process that. And I'll say, okay, now do you want to tremor for another minute? And if I do that slow enough and with a solid enough relationship, um, that progress will be consistent and it will get faster and faster. So now we're able to take bigger and bigger pieces. So I do the same thing. Now that works in clinical therapy with an individual. But what if I'm working with 500 people who just survived an earthquake? And people have been damaged, they've lost their homes, they may have lost a partner, a spouse, a child, something like that. 
This trauma is very severe, very raw. Well, I'll have all of them do the exercises together, but I'll tell them, look, we've all been through the same trauma. We all know if the person next to us cries, we know what they're crying about. It's about the survival and the struggle of life. Reach over and grab their hand. So actually use the community itself. I set it up to say, we're going to heal together. It's not going to be individually. We've got to get 500 of us moving towards health, not just a couple of us doing this. Because eventually, if you don't do that, the whole social structure of this community is going to collapse. See, because it will be a traumatized social structure. So we need the whole of the society to actually start moving together to feel the community or the commonality of us as human beings trying to all recover from something that was terribly threatening or frightening for us. And and that's so valuable for me. And we really miss that in what we call the Western world. We've become so individualized that we're missing the tremendous support of the community of other living human organisms that I believe that we need because Stephen Porges tells us we are a co-relational species. We are not independent. We are co-relational. And that means our nervous systems are constantly talking to each other. If you start taking away the nervous systems of the community of support around you, particularly when you need it, then you're gonna struggle in a more difficult way for your own personal healing because you want the co-relational nervous systems all supporting and talking to one another. And so that's what I do. I actually get in their head, help them remember, you, you just suffered this as a community. You're only going to heal it as a community. And they like that a lot because they understand that. Beautiful. I think it's so, so needed, not only in... in in areas of earthquakes or other catastrophes. But um, if we realize that we have to heal as a community from many, many, many uh, traumas that we went through without even knowing because they were sold to us as something normal. It's normal, right. it's normal, pharmacies, it's normal, media is normal, right. horror movies, normal. Yes. Yeah, we're being sold. You're right that terrifying us is normal. It's even pleasurable. We pay to go have it done. We pay to go sit in a theater to experience terror. Now, there's one thing about that that I think has tremendous value is that we may have lives that are tediously boring and we need to stimulate ourselves or, which is unfortunate, we're used to living in such high stimulation that if society doesn't give it to us, we're going to go pay and watch a terror movie. See, so that we keep ourselves stimulated. I think it was Stephen Porges who said, this should be our baseline of our nervous system, but our society has increased the baseline to up here. It does not even know that this part exists down here. And when people start to drop their baseline from up here to down here, it actually becomes frightening for many people rather than pleasurable. It's kind of interesting, the state of the human species on the planet. There's something I'm, I'm researching right now and I'm also doing is going into this bath and bath. When you take a bath for 12 hours to get rid of uh, of the acid in, in the body. Mm-hmm. Most people I talk to, they say, oh my God, two hours, four hours, 12 hours in a bathtub. It's so boring. I wouldn't survive it. And yeah. I thought, it's you are with yourself. We are not yeah. used to that anymore. It's not, yeah. it's not normal. We are so like... On this high pace of even one year old babies get the mobile phone entertainment. Yeah. So interesting what you just said. You mean being by yourself for 12 hours is going to be so boring. Could you imagine if you had a friend and you said to your friend, I can't be with you 12 hours because you're so boring. <laughs> Could you imagine it? But we say that about ourselves. I am such a boring individual that I can't be with myself alone for 12 hours. That's not a good friend to be with. And maybe it's even I'm frightened. Oh, yeah. To be with myself because then the things are coming up that I don't know. 
Exactly. See, as much as we want growth, we're afraid of growth as well. As much as we want inner peace, we're afraid to go deep enough to actually get to inner peace. And that's, I think that's part of life, though, because I see that in every culture around the world. This isn't unique. I can go to China tomorrow and find the exact same human nature of struggling with life that we would find in um, any place in Western Europe. So it's not culturally defined. It's about be finally figuring out how to be comfortable as a human being, not a specific uh, cultural being. And realizing that we are nature. Yeah. And that we are amazing, amazing beings using this, I re repeat myself, amazing instruments to, to navigate here on the planet. Yeah. yeah, it's true. The organism's fascinating. I mean, it's designed to figure out how to live. We're nothing like different than a plant or an animal in my, in my mind. We're on planet Earth. And we're pulsating the way our organism does. Now, a plant pulsates its own way, and animals pulsate their own way, mammals or reptilians, whatever. But we're no different. We just pulsate in our own way, and we should be trying to figure out how is our way of healthiest pulsation. I believe that when we get more in touch with our own pulsation is when we actually open up sort of the barrier, if you will, some sort of barrier around us where we actually allow in the pulsation of animals and pulsation of nature, the pulsation of the sun. I mean, Tesla said everything is about energy and vibration. That's it. We're, we're a vibrating energetic species, as is all of this. And when we soften whatever our defenses are, we can actually feel this energy and pulsation externally. And now we feel like we're part of it, like we're communicating with it rather than we're separate from it. The best way I could describe it is it's a dialogue that goes on between matter, physical matter and energy. We are both. Science has proven it. Physics knows this. We are both. We're matter and we're energy. I think being human is about The interplay between those two, it's not about just being matter, which we are when we're defended. It's not about just being energy, which we do if we open our kundalini, but we can't contain that energy in our bodies. It overwhelms us or floods us. We're supposed to figure out how do we get energy and matter to interplay with one another. And we have a consciousness to help us do that, which as far as we know, plants and animals don't. But we're supposed to be this nice interplay. That, to me, is the most pleasurable state of being human. It's when we can flow back and forth between those two and not get stuck in either one of those. Beautiful. Ah. <laughs> so I guess um, that everybody who follows us now becomes very, very, very curious How does it look like? I know that you've got videos and I will put the videos also in this, uh, in this solution, in this, uh, in this Lösung. So we don't have to talk through everything, but maybe you want to give us an, an idea. What are the techniques looking like? And we are able and thank you that uh, allow to share them also. Yeah. Right. Okay, so yeah, they can get the exercises online. I have several books I've written. They have pictures of the exercises, videos. And uh, traumaprevention.com, there's a link you click on and it shows you how to do the exercises. But for your audience listening right now, the easiest way to think of, go back to when I said we went into a fetal response when we were afraid. So the fetal response creates this adrenal reaction because the body for whatever reason feels threatened so it goes into its protective pattern well what better way to sort of dialogue with the body than actually to reverse the fetal response so the way you would do that is lay down on your back put the bottoms of your feet together let your knees fall open just like you do in yoga you're doing the um butterfly or frog position that's it you just lay there so now you've got the the legs open And you've got the whole torso exposed. But the trick to this was to now pick the pelvis up so that you've got a big arch in your back So, and you've extended the front of the body. So what did I do? 
I did the opposite of the fetal response. I pushed the body into a huge state of openness. And I hold it in that position for about one, maybe two minutes sometimes. And the body will start to, you'll feel it. It'll start to rock back and forth. It'll start to bounce up and down. So because it, that position is challenging your normal holding patterns. And we want to challenge those to start to let go. But then when you set your pelvis back down again, what I have people do is I have them close their knees only about one inch or maybe five centimeters at a time. Just close a tiny little bit and wait, because remember, we're working at the speed of a living organism now, not at the speed of the ego, because people will get impatient. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Something is happening. It just isn't manifesting itself yet, but it's preparing itself. So then after about two minutes, I have them close their knees again, just another five centimeters, another couple of inch, another inch and wait. And all of a sudden in the in inner thigh, you're going to start to feel the tremor. And as you keep closing your knees one minute at a time, more and more, the tremoring will actually get stronger and stronger because you're actually building the charge. And then once your knees are straight up and your feet are again flat on the floor, that tremor mechanism, if the charge has been built strong enough, will start to move itself through your structure. You're doing nothing. At this point, you could read a book or watch TV. It won't matter because we've activated the nervous system. And now the nervous system is doing the work. And what I like to say is basically you're in control of an out of control experience. And you experience that. You were laying there observing your body do something to you that completely confused you. Although while you were doing it, it felt pleasurable or weird or interesting. It wasn't threatening at all because the body knew exactly what it was doing, why it was doing and how to do it. And so all you do is you lay there. You just let yourself tremor and the tremor will start moving either up the body or down the body, wherever it needs to, to take fascia and start stretching it or to take muscle and start loosening it. It will adjust the spinal column, relax shoulders and neck very often. Maybe the jaw even will start to shake. All it's doing is finding every place at that moment that is available to release and it's releasing it. If you do it again tomorrow, there could be new places available for release and it'll release those. I love it so much. I have to do it right after our interview. Yes, you should. <laughs> I, I do it. I will do it after our session because I know even though we're comfortable and I'm enjoying it, in some place in me, I'm sure there's some anxiety that's built up, even if it's a low grade anxiety. Am I performing right or all those things we go through? And I'll just discharge for like five minutes will be completely gone. How often would you recommend when somebody's starting that doesn't have a severe trauma or is not yeah, aware of a severe trauma? Well, what I try to do is help people recognize. I don't want to give them a recipe because our society does that too much. I'm trying to help them get in touch with their body and let their body tell them how long and how often they need to do it. But at the beginning, I tell them, all right, tremor for about 15 minutes and um, just notice how that feels. Then you can stop. And then the next day, don't do anything. But the following day, tremor again for 15 minutes. But this time, see if you want to go longer or shorter. See if you can feel in your body. Is this pleasurable and I want to stay longer or I starting to feel tired, which probably means it's starting to release some tightness in there and I want to stop so that you have a flexibility to do this by following where your body is today. So I think the best thing to do is to help an individual try to find their baseline. And that will be different for all of us. And so starting every other day for about 15 minutes seems to be a pretty good way for people to begin to find their own baseline and know whether they need to increase or decrease their tremoring time. What about children? I just put a video up yesterday on my YouTube channel about children because they're the ones who showed us this. I mean, their freedom, their, their inhibition about living in their human body that we haven't trained them out of yet. I think children should learn this from as early of an age as possible. But when I worked with children, what I've seen is that they could tremor maybe for about... Um, 
from about seven years old upward. Before that, for some reason, they can't seem to activate the tremor mechanism very well. Um, and I'm not sure why that is. I'd need somebody who understands neurology to help me. But um, definitely teenagers should be doing this. They should be doing it pre-teen because the amount of social pressure on teenagers and the amount of cell phone use and, and computer use is really distancing them from their bodies. Please look at the YouTube video I just put up there because I give some explanations about that and how they need, they desperately need to have this tremor mechanism because it restores sensory reception in the body because they're going numb because they're using computers and their phones and they're no longer accessing anything that's going on in their body. So all their emotional disturbances and, and uh, confusion is coming from their head, which then feeds itself into the body in a form of numbness. See, and so that they, they desperately need it. They need to be reconnected to their bodies. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. Now we go to elder people. Uh, what is your experience when the, their muscles are maybe not strong enough to, to lift up their pelvic area or should they just exercise to do it? What do you recommend? Yeah. No, I actually find working with older people uh, easier because they have less muscular resistance and honestly, they find it far more pleasurable. So what I'll do is even if they can't, I'll have them lay down in bed and just open the knees. They don't even have to pick their pelvis up because they're already available to letting go because they don't have such strong resistance in their structure anymore. And so they can just open their knees and do the same thing, close them slowly. And usually they'll get a very fine, deep tremor movement. They won't get big movements like some people get. Younger people usually get big structural movements. But elderly people get this really fine, deep tremor that feels so pleasurable. And they love it. They're the easiest people to kind of work with, actually. Beautiful. So what I learned is that uh, this technique is easy to do by ourselves and to learn it. But if we are working as therapists with uh, people who have severer traumas, it's good to, um, to learn it more in depth and also um, yeah, get experiences. How right. can we do it or how can therapists uh, do it? Where should they uh, go? They can go to traumaprevention.com and it says click there to, to find a training program. We, we train people what we call being practitioners because it's not therapy. I'm trying to stay out of the therapy world. I'm just trying to get it into the world of self-healing. Um, and so they can do that. They can be trained to do it. But here's what's interesting about it. The, the real reason for what we call, quote, the therapist is simply to continue to provide uh, the field of safety so that the individual can do their self-exploration and their own inner depth of, of release. And so that the, the therapist helps to regulate that for them, particularly if they've had severe trauma. And, and they need that because some people with severe trauma need somebody outside to help them regulate. They can't do it by themselves. And so it works for that. The other thing in TRE specifically is that if you did this by yourself and you're doing fine for three months, but then it hits the trauma that's been hidden in there for 20 years, now you might say, oh, I need somebody now to help me go through this, to be an objective observer, somebody I can talk to, somebody who helps me know how to regulate it because I can't feel how to regulate it. And the other thing too is people will tremor and they'll say, but it's not going to my shoulders. I don't know how to get it to my shoulders. Well, there's some blockage in there because it can go to the shoulders and TRE providers are trained how to observe the body and make interventions to facilitate that movement into the areas of the body that it doesn't go to easily or naturally. I think that many of us who are listening now <laughs> would want to first experience it by themselves and then uh, also be able to, to support others uh, through that process. At least I'm, I do because I, I love to repeat myself. It's simple and it's so effective. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please do it. Because this is what I found. I've been doing it for 30 years now. 
what I find is that the, the tremendous amount of depth that we have in ourselves as a human living organism on the planet is far exceeds what our ego can even conceive. So I keep going to levels and layers and depths in myself that I didn't even know existed. Um, so I think part of our purpose of being on the planet is to keep continuing to explore the depth of what it is to be a human on the planet. And this helps us in that way. Yes. It's an amazing, beautiful last word for this conversation, but I will give you another one. <laughs> If there's something else you want to you want to share with us. No, I think the only thing I want to share is that this tremor mechanism is so organic and so natural to the human body. People should at least activate it to experience it. Whether they choose to use it or not is different. Um, because I've had people do TRE with me and they liked it. It was a good experience, but then they never did it again for five years. But five years later, it had a profound depth of experience in them. So I'm just saying explore being human this is part of your genetically encoded mechanism in your nervous system if it's genetically encoded in you you should have a curiosity of exploring activating it and using it to see does it have any potential for you right now where you are in your growth or developmental process if so use it if not go ahead and set it aside because you could be on another path right now but what i try to encourage people Please just don't ignore it. It seems to be too important to the human body to just ignore a profound mechanism like this that's embedded in us that mostly society has trained us not to pay attention to. Please also use this video, use this uh, solution and share it. Share it and uh, you might really change lives doing so. Yeah. The easiest way for people to sort of get a visual of this, because you know what it's like. If I was talking to you about this and you never experienced it, it would be a completely different conversation, see? Um, so the easiest way for me to help people understand it is uh, on my um, Instagram channel where I put short videos of people tremoring all over the world. And then we make an intervention in their body so you could see how the tremor mechanism responds to that. And so they can get clips to see that every human body will tremor and every human body will tremor uniquely different because we all have a different history in our structure. And so it's going to find the uniqueness of your history and help you to release that. See, So I think visuals are better for people than reading theory about it. Yes, we will put all the links like to go through all the exercises step by step and the, the links to the Instagram videos and links to the your YouTube uh, videos. Um, and you can yeah, yeah, take a bath in it, but don't only watch it, do it. <laughs> it's really, it's, it's really a few minutes that can, that can make a big shift in your process of, of realizing what an amazing uh, human or divine being you are incorporated in this in this body very true very, i agree with you david thank you so much thank you very much for the invitation it was fun talking with you it's not the end it's not the last conversation i'm sure no. uh, we will keep you updated and uh, thank you for listening to us and thank you for stopping now listening to us and doing it <laughs> maybe right <Exactly. laughs> thank you all right <laughs> Thank you so much. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Auf der Living Earth teilen wir viele Lösungen wie diese, um gemeinsam eine neue, lebendige Erde zu gestalten. Schaue dir jetzt gleich das Video auf der Startseite an und finde heraus, was für andere wundervolle Dinge die Living Earth noch kann. Jeder Pionier ist wertvoll. Falls du also noch kein Pionier bist, komm, wir freuen uns auf dich.